Welcome, I'm Alex, and this is a guide to mastering the Ultimate Boogeyman Simulator, also known as John Wick Hex. This video has been sponsored by the publisher of the game, Good Shepherd Entertainment, to celebrate the launch of John Wick Hex on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PC through Steam as of today. Also, just for the fun of it, I have meticulously hidden five Steam codes for the game throughout this one video, here is part of one to get the hunt started, and I'm also giving away a physical copy of the game over on my Twitter page as well, at BoomstickAlex. If you want to just good old fashioned buy the game instead, it's 30% off for a limited time right now on Switch and Steam, so use that link I have at the top of the video description to head over to the John Wick Hex Steam page if you want it on PC. Now with all of that digital housekeeping out of the way, what you came for, let's get into the details of how exactly this innovative tactical take on the John Wick license actually plays out. First, you move node to node, or hex to hex in this case, in a turn-based manner to carefully massacre your way through numerous action set piece vignettes. Notice I used the word carefully, because a few wrong moves or careless shots will end Johnny's day pretty quickly, so you must learn to play like an actual assassin pro. Luckily, the added strategic depth thanks to the timeline system at the top of the screen lets you plan out, interrupt, surprise, and outplay the opposition by using its timing-based intel to your advantage. For example, you might catch yourself out in the open with enemies lining up shots on you, and by highlighting one of your actions, you can get a preview of when it will actually play out on the timeline and possibly beat out that incoming shot. If you use a fast acting command like throwing your gun or a melee range parry, you can interrupt oncoming attacks if you can strike an enemy first when they're priming up their actions. Sometimes though, you might not be able to get in any actions before a bullet lands on your head, but there are a few ways to save face, literally. Stationary opponents give you a pretty high chance to actually hit them, but when they're on the move, you'll find that the odds will be somewhat less in your favor. Moving while being fired upon will increase the chances of your enemies missing you as well. Even better, if you're crouched, you can initiate an evasive dodge roll, which is great for playing extra flashy and tactical, but does use up charges of your focus meter. You can always just take the time to refocus to boost this meter back up, so in between combat encounters, make sure to freely top this meter off because you might just need it. Focus is also important for backstep dodging out of the way of incoming melee attacks right before they land, so the last thing you want to happen is to get surrounded with no focus, which almost always means you're dead, start the level over. Movement is one of the most important elements in John Wick Hex, and using line of sight to your advantage is almost entirely vital. By breaking visual line of sight with enemies aiming and about to fire upon you, this will stop their attack, forcing them to reassess the situation. Popping in and out of cover, or strategically using crouch behind waist-high barriers, is one of the best ways to get in your own shots while breaking incoming enemies' aim. Crouching also increases your percentage chance of landing shots, and gives you access to that really useful dodge roll I just talked about, but make sure not to get caught right up in melee range while you're crouched, because you cannot perform any melee attacks while you're in it. Some of the special enemy types and bosses you'll be coming across will make you shift your normal strategy, forcing you to play more up close and personal. Higher tier enemies will have a focus meter under their standard health bar, and the more it's charged, the harder of a time you'll have actually landing ranged shots on them. Melee attacks will quickly whittle down this gauge, and then open them up for ranged damage, sometimes easier said than done. Another thing you need to always keep in mind is the speed of the weapons you'll be borrowing from the recently deceased. Some guns will also fire multiple bullets and will activate quickly on the timeline, but will make you stand in place for longer than normal as you continue to spray and pray. Make sure to constantly glimpse up at the timeline before firing, which is showing you not only where your shots will activate, but also how long you'll have to spend in the shooting animation. If you see an enemy or two that is about to start their next action in the next 1-3 to three seconds or so, and you begin firing a larger gun, chances are they'll be able to stop, line up a shot, and get in damage before you even stop firing. This makes submachine guns, shotguns, and assault rifles strong if you time them right, but also risky compared to your trusty pistols that often have far shorter activation and ending animation after you shoot them. 
Just like the films, this makes you most eager to get your hands on pistols for the majority of the time, which is all passively done by just how everything was balanced with the timeline system. Baba Yaga approved. Now there's a few extra bonus things to keep in mind as you try to survive through these combat gauntlets. First, notice the doors spread out around the map with a purple pinkish glow coming out of them. Those are where enemies will be entering from. Sometimes your enemies will be getting the best of you and you won't be able to fully see into the matrix to avoid all oncoming gunfire at all times, so plan to take on at least some damage. You do have bandages that you can use to top off your health, but wait, Really consider if the time is right because they take a super long time to activate and you only get a set amount of bandages for an entire string of levels. Some roguelite elements here. Although personally, I'm more of a gameplay focused guy and that's what I often drone on and on about the most if you haven't noticed, but for those story people out there, this does have a brand new narrative being told in between levels that is set prior to the events of the films. Actor Ian McShane reprises his role as Winston and Lance Reddick as Charon, with Troy Baker joining in as the new villain Hex. I honestly believed that Hex, you, were a fiction, a myth to keep the stuff in line. I worked hard on that, staying out of sight. Until you decided to kidnap us. Yeah, until then. Now to start wrapping this all up, like I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm giving out a physical copy of John Wick Hex on Xbox One or Switch over on my Twitter page. You don't have to jump through any silly hoops or sign up for anything, and instead, whoever can come up with the funniest but clean item that John Wick could kill someone with will be declared the winner chosen purely by myself here in a few days. So if you have a clever idea and hopefully no first-hand experience, head over to Twitter and just comment your entry in my John Wick Hex post to have a chance. A big thanks to Good Shepherd Entertainment for sponsoring this video and for providing all those free ways for my viewers to get access to the game. Pretty cool. Have you found all of those hidden codes yet, by the way? Well, they might not all just be in the rendered out video itself, but they are all in the scope of this one YouTube page. Again, if you just want to buy John Wick Hex on Xbox One, Switch, or through Steam, use that link I have at the top of the video description that takes you directly over to the Steam page, and also makes me look good in those campaign analytics. I appreciate you giving this a watch all the way up to the very end, thanks for that, and as always, this has been Alex, I'll be seeing you next time.